Hello, I'm Saksham Agarwal, a PhD student at Cornell University. As the title suggests today, I'll talk about congestion control, but for a completely new kind of congestion, host congestion. In fact, it hasn't been even a year since the problem of host congestion was first reported by the community. Nevertheless, host congestion forced us to revisit many fundamental assumptions entrenched within decades of research and practice of congestion control. And today I want to share with you what we have learned so far in the process. All right, let's jump right in. The conventional wisdom in our community is that congestion happens primarily in the network core, that is, at switches. For instance, due to oversubscribed topologies, in gas traffic patterns, poor load balancing, etc. However, recent studies from large scale production clusters at Google, Microsoft, Alibaba, et cetera, have demonstrated a fundamental shift of congestion from the network core to the hosts. Essentially, adoption of multi hundred gigabit links coupled with relatively stagnant technology trends for resources within the hosts, like cache sizes, memory bandwidth and access latencies, has led to emergence of host congestion. To understand host congestion, we need to understand the host interconnect. Today's host interconnect has three main components. CPUs exchange information among themselves and send read or write requests to DRAM via processor interconnect. Next, send read or write requests to CPUs and to DRAM via peripheral interconnect. Memory interconnect, specifically a memory controller, intercepts read or write requests from CPUs and from NICs and execute them on DRAM. Importantly, peripheral interconnect connects to processor and memory interconnect using an integrated I.O. controller known as IIO. The host interconnect has two interesting properties. First, the hardware guarantees lossless data transfer using hop-by-hop -hop credit based mechanism. Second, it is shared by both network and host local applications. Importantly, network applications use congestion control, but host applications do not. Like most real-world network fabrics, host interconnect is also oversubscribed. For instance, traffic from host local applications and network applications can contend for memory interconnect bandwidth, leading to congestion at the memory controller. Since the host interconnect is lossless, this congestion results in back pressure all the way back to the NIC, resulting in packets being queued and eventually getting dropped at the NIC. Host congestion can incur significant impact on network application performance. This is precisely what was shown to happen in Google's production cluster in a recent Hotnet paper. Specifically, even with state-of-the-art congestion control protocol and state-of-the-art user space network stack, Servers in Google production clusters observe high queuing delays and packet drop rates, even when access link bandwidth is far from saturation. We reproduce the host congestion phenomenon in Google's cluster, but using an open source network stack and CC protocol. Although the Google study focused mainly on packet drops, we also demonstrate the impact of app level performance. We observe the host congestion can lead up to 55% throughput degradation and up to 5,000 X tail latency inflation. We have open sourced the workloads needed to reproduce all our results. The problem is likely to get worse over time. While access link bandwidths are expected to increase by four to 14 X over the next few years, technology trends for memory bandwidth have largely remained stagnant. Therefore, memory bandwidth contention will increase over time. Our work takes the first step towards alleviating application level performance degradation in the regime of host congestion. To that front, we argue, First, we must rethink congestion signals to capture host congestion. Host congestion is a result of queuing at resources like memory controller, which is outside of what is considered to be the network by existing CC protocols. Traditional congestion signals like switch buffer occupancy or packet drops, therefore, do not capture the precise time, location, and reason for host congestion. We must also rethink congestion response. This is because of two reasons. First, Unlike network traffic, host local traffic does not employ congestion control mechanisms. This breaks an unspoken assumption in classical CC literature that all competing traffic must adhere to the congestion control protocol. The second reason we must rethink congestion response is that host local traffic operates at a sub-microsecond granularity and is much closer to the congestion point. Thus, classical congestion control protocols that operate at network RTT granularity can perform far from optimal in the host congestion regime. We propose host CC, a new CC architecture that handles both host and network congestion. The key idea in host CC is a sub RTT granularity host local congestion response to allocate host resources between network traffic and host local traffic. At the center, host CC uses host local congestion response to ensure that network traffic is not starved even at sub RTT granularity. 
At the receiver, host CC uses host local congestion response to minimize queuing and packet drops at the host. It modulates host resources allocated to the network traffic at sub RTT granularity to ensure that NIC queues are drained at the same rate at which the network traffic arrives at the NIC. I'll now provide an end to end overview of host CC architecture. First, in addition to congestion signals from within the network fabric, host CC generates host congestion signals at the host interconnect at some microsecond timescales. These host congestion signals enable host CC to precisely capture the time, location, and reason for host congestion. Specifically, host CC uses IIO buffer occupancy as its congestion signal. IIO occupancy can be measured by reading a register typically available in commodity hardware, allowing host CC to work without any hardware modifications or support. Host CC uses host local congestion signals to allocate host resources between network traffic and host local traffic. Current host CC implementation employs Intel Memory Bandwidth Allocation Tool, also referred to as MBA, to perform host resource allocation. MBA provides a simple, multi-level back pressure mechanism to the host local traffic. Updating the resource allocation using MBA requires updating a single hardware register, which also is typically available on commodity hardware. This allows host CC to perform its host local congestion response without any modifications to the applications and hardware. Note that host CC architecture does not dictate the precise resource allocation policy. Just like different network resource allocation mechanisms use different allocation policies, like maximum fairness, prioritization, etc., we envision host CC to embody various host resource allocation policies and respective implementation. Finally, host CC uses both host and network congestion signals to perform efficient network resource allocation at RTD timescales. The key insight is that sending rate for network traffic must be computed based on the bottleneck capacity, not just within the network, but also at the host interconnect. Host CC can be integrated with any network congestion control protocol. The only difference is that the protocol will now use both host and network congestion signals. We implemented and evaluated host CC over Linux network stack using DCTCP as a network CC protocol. Host CC achieves high network utilization and low tail latencies under host congestion regimes. This is enabled by host CC significantly reducing queuing and packet drops at the host using its host local congestion response. Further, host CC maintains its benefits even when there is network congestion along with host congestion. To increase the degree of network congestion, we varied the degree of in in the network. Host CC ensures that the network CC converges to a rate that matches available network and host resources. Host CC's host local congestion response also enables enforcing desired host resource allocation policies. For instance, network traffic achieves increasing throughput with increasing values of target bandwidth for network traffic specified by the user. Our paper provides more details on host CC benefits by doing a deep dive into host CC's behavior at a microsecond scale level. Please check it out if you're interested. I'll now outline a few interesting avenues of future research based on our experience building host CC. First, the tool for host resource allocation currently used in host CC, MVA, has a key limitation. Upon successive MVA levels, it results in a coarse-grained allocation for host resources. We need more support from hardware to perform fine-grained host resource allocation at a sub-RTT granularity. Secondly, it is unclear if newer technologies like CXL or RDMA would help resolve host congestion. For example, CXL would help reduce PCI to IIO latency but it does not alleviate congestion at the memory interconnect. RDMA using zero copy reduces memory bandwidth utilization to a certain degree, but network traffic still traverses the memory interconnect while performing DMA. And finally, it would be useful to explore additional host congestion signals. Host CC can be easily extended to incorporate additional signals. For instance, we discuss in the paper some simple extensions to generate delay-based congestion signals. Also, while commodity hardware does not provide NIC buffer occupancy, it would be interesting to explore whether it can provide accurate information on time, location, and reason for host congestion. To summarize, I talked about host CC, a new CC architecture that handles both host and network fabric congestion. Using a sub-RTD host local congestion response along with an RTD level network congestion response. We have realized host CC within the Linux network stack without modifications in applications, host hardware, and network hardware. We have open source host CC code and required workloads to reproduce our results. Thank you.